Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is your girl, Minister Michelle Woodard. <laughs> we here on another Testimonial Tuesday with this brother I have in front of me. I don't know about you, but I've been anticipating this moment all the day long. Before we go any further, we just first have to lift up the name of Jesus. Ah, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house and begin to worship our God. I will bless the Lord ah, at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof. <laughs> oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us begin to exalt him. I first give honor to my Lord Jesus Christ and Savior and to my bishop in the persons of Bishop Glenn A. Staples and Pastor Walter Lamar Staples being the senior pastor here at the Temple of Praise. Oh, my God. And of course, our first lady. First Lady Aisha Staples. I don't know about y'all, but that's enough to give God a hand clap of praise. Send down some hearts for those ones. First of all, viewers, I thank you. I thank you all for supporting. Click, tag, and share. Before we go any further, click, tag, and share. And let them know that Testimonial Tuesdays is on. And it's on the way. And this guest speaker that I have here in front of me, you do not want to miss his testimony. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say. You don't want to miss his testimony. We're gonna be coming out of Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Woo! I'm so excited. And it begins by saying, "Thus far, Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thy cast forth out of the womb, I sank." thee. Ah, and I ordained thee a prophet until the nations. And God's word is already blessed. Truly it is. Let's have a quick moment of prayer. Most holy, wise, eternal father. This is just a few of your humble servants, oh God, coming to you on bended knees, oh God. God, we ask now ah, that you clear the airways, oh Father God. God, that you touch your man servant on today, oh God. God, give him words from on high that would change the lives of your people, oh God. God, through his testimony, ah, through his trial and tribulations, oh God, you said in your word, oh God, trials and tribulations ah, come to make us strong. So Father God, we're on bended knees, ah, interceding on the behalf of one another. And Father God, ah, we thank you for yet again another opportunity to give your name, praise, glory, and honor. Now, God, I pray that at the end of this broadcast, ah, that lives will be changed, someone will be set free, and someone will come running saying, what? I must do to be saved. We ask all these blessings in your son Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeem of the Lord say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. again. I, I won't further this, y'all. I'm just so excited. <laughs> this young brother right here, I've been knowing a mighty, mighty, mighty long time. And just to see his transformation, just to see how God has used him in a mighty and in a blessing way to the nations, to our capital, just here in the local D.C. area alone, he has been preaching and teaching the gospel. But of course, his success didn't start overnight. Ah, if you knew the story behind his glory, but you will know tonight. This is why it's called Testimonial Tuesdays. Ah, I present to some and introduce to others our very own Pastor Joshua Johnson. <laughs> Coming to you by the way of living to make change. Y'all need to go follow this brother, Pastor Jay. I am so excited. I'm ecstatic for what the Lord is doing in your life, sir. Yeah. It is truly an honor. I am truly privileged, glad that you answered the call. And I'm truly, I'm honored that you decide to say yes to, to this Testimony of Tuesday broadcast. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Um, how did you come to know Jesus? In what fashion? I know it's reading your book, and we're going to get into that too, but reading your book, if I can just hold it up here, I hope y'all can see this. Can y'all see this? Confession of a Chosen Vessel, the book of Joshua. Y'all don't want to miss this. I'm telling you, go get this brother's book, because it is giving 
so much testimony in itself of what God has done for him. But I ain't gonna prolong the I ain't gonna prolong the broadcast any longer. I'm gonna let him tell his own story coming straight from his mouth. So Pastor Jay, how did you come to know Jesus in the free pardon of your son? Um, um uh, Minister Michelle, before I before I do that, um I'm having some of my viewers saying that they can't view it on your page. Tell them to go to my page. It's uh, not coming up. Okay, let's see. Wait a minute. We gonna hold fast. We had we was um having technical difficulties, but nevertheless, we gonna get it straightened out right now. Let's see. It should be there. Come on. There you go. Are they going to testimonial Tuesdays with Minister Michelle Woodard on Facebook? Because it's oh, up. Oh, that's that's why I didn't never have that page. Yes. So Tell them to go to Testimonial Tuesdays with Minister Michelle Woodard, and it's right there. Okay, hold on one second. It's Testimony. Testimonial Tuesdays with Minister Michelle Woodard. Got it. 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 Appreciate you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Got it. Got it. I'm on here. There you go. There, there you, you go. go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. All right. I guess we can start over again. We can start over. Well, again. praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Glad that you tuned in. Glad that you decided to click, tag, and share. I'm coming to you all the way live from Testimonial Tuesdays. And before we go any further, I have already introduced this man of God, but I don't mind doing it again. First, giving honor to our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior, who is truly the head of my life. And the Bible say in Psalm 34 and 1, I will bless the Lord. Uh, at yeah, all yeah. times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the lord and the humble share here thereof oh magnify the lord with me <laughs> and let us exalt him together i present to some and introduce to others i already exalted my, my my lord jesus christ and savior and given honor to my bishop bishop glenn a staples and in the persons of pastor walter lamar staples and of course our very own aisha staples as the first lady this young brother that i have here in front of you oh my god i'm just so i'm just honored i don't even know where to begin because i've been ex anticipating this day all day long this moment in time this kairos moment with this yeah. brother that's sitting across from me in this virtual yeah. land <laughs> better known as pastor joshua johnson sir it is a privilege and i am good to honored see you. good to see likewise you. likewise see you. sir likewise yeah yep. good to see as you I, likewise as i was stating earlier and i'm gonna slow my road because i told you i'm excited but <laughs> I, I, uh, let me let me do this let me do this too let's let's go all the way back y'all better get his book confessions of a chosen vessel the book of joshua yeah ah, i mean yeah. this book is just so I mean, when I read it, Pastor Jay, I got emotional. I saw crying. I was motivated. I was inspired all in one. 
all in one. And this and this period that I just read it, because I mean, it's just so much. Y'all got to read it. You got to fully read it. Go and get this book. I'm pretty sure his team has already uploaded on his page and Facebook how to get in contact with him to get this book and how to reach him on YouTube as well as Facebook Live and Instagram, yeah. Preacher CEO. I'm telling you, this little brother right here, I can call him my little brother because I seen him grow up. This young man of God has is doing some things for the kingdom. You hear me? The Bible yeah. already say the kingdom suffered violence and we got to take it back by force so That's no right. matter what i mean he will not put his hands on our young generation i refuse that right now in the name of jesus and across from me is a living witness he yeah. started off young in the ministry but he's yeah. powerful in god ah but i won't i won't i won't i tell you i'm not gonna prolong it pastor jay i'm so excited i'm so yeah. excited yeah. <laughs> Sir. but yeah. I mean, the questions I always usually ask people, I'm I'm just going to be different tonight and just do whatever the Lord tells me to do. But yeah. reading your book on page 29, if I'm not mistaken, I remember seeing something saying your mother and your father instilled God in you as a child. Yeah. Expound on that. And how did you come to know Jesus Christ? Well, my father, my father was saved. My father was filled with the Holy Ghost once he transitioned from the streets. Um, and my very first church was the, the founder of uh, Bishop C.L. Long, mm -hmm. uh, where, where I grew um, to know God. Um, my father has always has been um, there when it came to the walk in Christ. And my mother was the nurturer um, um, for the 10 years that she, you know, that she was on earth, that I was allowed to be in her presence. Um, mm -hmm. She also instilled in me um, church as well. But my father was the, the root of it. Um, so um, Mondays, we was in church. Tuesday, we was in church. Thursday, we was in church. Friday, we was in church. Saturday right. and all day Sunday. Okay. We in church, you know. Um, and um, so, so through all the, the years, um, um, God has literally put his hands on me um, to know him personally um, through the teaching and, and the influence um, of my father um, as, as I was a little child. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're, not only your mother and your father, mm -hmm. you had the privilege to have both of them in your life. Absolutely. Which which is an awesome and a, a, it's a blessing because some of us don't have that. Absolutely. But um, reading your book, Passage, mm -hmm. ooh, I, I'm just going to say this. You never know what a person is going through yeah. until you get the full story. Absolutely. Until, until you dive into their footprints or actually hear it. And the mm -hmm. only way we can hear it, I mean, other than you telling us, is is through this as well. That's right. Sorry, I don't, I don't, uh, I just, I don't, I don't even know where to begin. I really don't <laughs> because it's it's so many questions. It's it is it's so many questions. But I'm a I'm a upload I'm a uphold this one. You spoke something, in chapter two. Yeah. On page twenty nine. I told you I've been doing my homework <laughs> and you said something so profound right here. You said, if you don't mind me, I'm going to quote a little bit of it. Go ahead. The miracle did not manifest in my life physically. Yeah. I don't, I don't just see with accuracy in the natural, but also in the spirit. Now you was talking about the accident that you had as a child. Absolutely. Talk talk about that experience and the encounter and the faith that your mother had well, on, well, on one well, of the reasons of why you're sitting in front of us today. Absolutely. Um, um, back in um, 1985, I have experienced one of the most tragic, um, tragic events that any child um, could have experienced at the age of three 
um, and any parents would ever want their child to experience. Um, I got hit by a car um, going about 60 miles per hour, drug a half a mile up the street, um, then um, on impact was pronounced dead on impact, was literally cold turkey um, to the point where they had to fly me from um, Maryland to DC to Children's Hospital where in the air unit, they already pronounced me dead. They already had the time. They already had um, the procedures of how many times they tried to bring me back to life. And they had a final time. And from the time of the air unit, for me getting transported to the hospital, it was roughly about 25 minutes. Then they get me to the hospital. They try again. Um, nothing. So you're saying that I've been dead, according to the doctors, I was literally deceased for an hour and a half. Yeah. I was deceased for an hour. I was deceased for an hour and a half. Um, then, 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 then the most, the most awkward moment that any mother or, or father will ever endure is when the doctor comes in and tell you um, that your baby boy or your baby girl is no longer with you. Come on now. Um, and um, my mother was uh, a woman of faith. And I can yeah. elaborate on more of that. She was a woman of faith. My father was a man of faith, with, um, but a man of few words. And what happened was that my mother did something that was like the act of Jesus. Uh, when Jesus went in to um, lay his hands on Jairus' daughter, he said, everybody else stay here. I'm going to go in. And my mother did that. She said, when the doctor came out, she said, yeah, um, um, take me to him and check his pulse one more time. And when the doctor did it, but he said this before he went, he said, for your sanity and for your, uh, uh, um, um, just for you to have a peace of mind, he said, I'm going to do that. But watch this, watch this, Michelle. Um, in medical history, they were supposed to clean me up. Yeah. <laughs> in medical history, they were supposed to wipe the blood, clean me up to prepare the visitation of my family. My yeah. mother told me when she went there, I was still covered in blood. My she God. said right then, right then and there, God told her, that's not his blood, that's mine. And she, he, he said, he said, he told her, he said, that's not your son blood. That's my blood. And, and she said, the doctor begins to go over to my right side and literally touch my paws. And there I had a slight pause in my arm. To make a long story short, they tried to test me. They tried to say everything. They came back and told my mother and they told my mother, they say, well, if he survived this coma, um, he's going to be a vegetable. You're going to have to take care of him for the rest of his life. You're going to have to do this X, Y, and Z. Um, he's basically going to be a a a a, a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And my mother said, if if you uh, are telling the truth, the God that told me that he was going to preach the gospel is a liar. And Mama. that's why. That's why. And if I could put a pause right there, that's why you have to be around faith believers when when you can't pray for yourself when you when you when you can't lift your hands up when you can't even say god thank you you need to be around somebody that will intercede for you that yeah. literally would tell you that tell god thank you on your behalf and god will honor their voice because you can't speak yeah, my yeah. God. He, he will he will honor your voice. So what he did was he honored my he honored my mother's voice. Yeah. Uh, um, even when I couldn't articulate his name. Yeah, before I even could articulate his name, he 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 he, he sub subject and, and submitted to my mother's voice. To make a long story short, the doctors came back and said, well, he's gonna be a vegetable, whatever. So one particular day um, um, of my mother's visits and stuff like that, my family went down and made their way to the cafeteria. And when they came back up, I was gone. I always uh, uh, related to this story, the lady with the issue of blood, when yeah. she touched the hem of God's body the Bible never said that it took a process for her to be healed, but
but the Bible says that she was made whole. And, and when you're made whole, you don't have no side effects. All right. You, you, you don't, you don't, you don't have no side effects. See, medication have side effects. If you go to aspirin, it'll have diarrhea, have dizziness, it'll, it'll have bleeding issues that, that you might um, 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 get once you take that particular medicine. But the medicine that I took was Jesus medicine and Jesus don't have no side effects. And when God healed my body as a little boy, I got out of the bed, went to the playhouse. Anybody that knows Children Hospital in Washington, D.C., you know they have a playroom on every floor. Yeah, yeah. And this particular time that the playroom was directly across from the hall, and I went there. My mother, my father, my family, they came back up looking for me. They came back and searching for me, and I wasn't there. And they assumed that I went for MRI or I went to uh, to get x-rays or whatever the case may be. And, and, and so they didn't play it no mind until the doctor walked in and said, where is he? Oh, God, where is he? And, and that, that kind of reminded me of the, the, uh, of the story of Lazarus when Jesus showed up after, after being away for four days. And he said, where you lay him at? And the doctor said, well, where is he? And my mother said, I thought you had him. My God, I thought I thought you had them, and 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 they did emergency shutdown because they thought somebody watch this stole a baby in a coma. <laughs> they they thought they did emergency shutdown because they thought they thought that somebody stole a baby in a coma. And so, 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 so the doctor answered this question. The doctor answered this question. He said, he said, how close were you? What do he love to do? And just through general conversation, my mother said, he loves to play. He loves to play. And the doctor said, let me check a place. And there I was in the playroom playing with the other kids with no side effects, no side effects, no hurts, no pains. Didn't even know that I lost my eye. Didn't even know it. 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 Cause you wanted to play. I wanted to play. You wanted to play and you want <clears throat> Yeah. See, I, and you little do you know what you do know. God was already using you and had a call on your life even yeah. then. You yeah. didn't feel no pain. I, I didn't feel <laughs> I never I never felt the impact. You I, I never I never felt the impact of of the drag. I never reaped the the the, the, the stuff that, that doctors said I would have reaped. I never reaped what study says that this got to happen to him. This got this, to. This has to happen to him. You get hit by an antique. We're not talking about these plastic cars now. Well, I'm talking about all metal cars, <clears throat> drug a half a mile up the road. And this must happen. You get impacted. This is what's going to happen. You're going to have brain damage. You're going to lose your vision. You ain't going to learn how to walk. You ain't going to be able to talk. This is what the doctor said. This is going to happen. Not it may be. Not it, it should come. No, this is what's going to happen to your son. This is what's going to happen. But I got out of the bed because I was ready to play. You was ready to play. <laughs> yeah, I was ready to play. Look, and I ain't going to touch too much of this book because y'all got to go buy this book. I don't told gotta you. Go buy. Tell them they go got buy to the go book. buy. They got to go by, so I ain't going to give you too much. But I'm going to bring up this point right here. <clears throat> In chapter 1, page 25, it says here, after my accident, I bounced back almost immediately. immediately. And and I get I get, give God all the glory. Yeah. I woke up out of the coma three days before my third birthday. Yeah. Now, let, I don't know if you, I don't even know what you realize what you said. <clears throat> Yeah. Listen to me now. When I heard this, my spirit immediately jumped, jumped yeah. up and it awakened. Yeah. Three days before your third birthday. Before. 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 Three days yeah. before your third birthday. Yeah. To me, when I read this, it hit my spirit. God died at the age of 33. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And basically yeah. what I felt then when he when he died at the age of 33, you lived again. No. I lived again. Yeah. Uh, you lived again because you yeah. was already covered by the blood. Yeah. See, you this. felt this no pain. Happened. This this is this is you what felt happened. no this pain. Is, I felt no pain, but this is what I get. Most people was baptized to be born again. I believe that God 
literally when he allowed me to stop breathing for an hour and a half, I was with him. And when I returned back to the body, that was a significant sign that I was a new person, period. Because in scientific and scientific medical history says I should have been dead. Mm -hmm. But when you're in the arms of God, he knows yeah. how to restore you and make you whole again. He know how to make you new again. He know how to make you new again. Listen, listen, it, it, it was, see, you know, when you've been with God, because you won't feel no pain. You won't. That's why the Bible says, as I walk through the valley of the shadow, shadow of, of death, death, I'll fear no evil. If you look in at it for just a little while, is you won't feel no pain. You ain't going to feel no pain. You're not even supposed to feel the anxieties or the stress because he says, as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will feel no pain. You will feel no evil because he's sending the rod and staff to comfort you. Come on now. Because if you, if you go anywhere through the valley of the shadow of the death, you got protection. Yeah. And the protection is, it can protect you from pain. It's supposed to protect you from danger scenes and danger unseen. It's unseen. supposed to protect you from that. It's, it's, it's supposed to protect you. It's supposed to protect you. It's supposed to protect you. And most people, they look at, the, they look at that text and they say, oh, I, I just supposed to walk through this and, and, and just use my faith. No, no, not only do you use supposed to use your faith but you're supposed to not fear what you're going through come on you you ain't supposed to fear you ain't supposed to even pay no attention i told the people the other night i said stop looking at the task and look at the outcome come on here uh, Stop, stop looking at the task. Stop looking at what you're going through. Stop looking at how hard it is. Stop looking at um, why it, it, um, it, you was chosen for this particular assignment. Why did God chose you for that particular um, um, experience? And just focus on the outcome. Because yeah. the Bible says we can may endure. Endure. See, that word endure, endure. and may go hand in hand. That means I was made for this process. So if I was made for the process, then guess what? He ain't gonna put no more on me than I can bear. Then you so can bear. What I can do. I don't have to pay no attention to what I'm going through. I just got to focus on where the outcome is. And the outcome is where the joy and the victory is. Come on. It's where your victory is. It's where your victory. Your victory is in the outcome. Your, your victory, your victory is in the outcome. It's in the outcome. And, and beside all that, sir, he did not give us the spirit of fear. He did not. But of power, love, and a sound mind. And Pastor that's what people mess up right there, Michelle. It's because they don't have a sound mind. <laughs> they they don't have a sound mind. You have you have leaders that don't have sound minds. You yeah. got you got you got pew members that don't have a sound mind. And, and and that's why they're living in fear. It's because their mind is not protected. Oh God, their mind is not protected. And, and and you have to learn how to tell people to get your mind protected. Because when your mind protected, not only will you not fear, you won't live in the spirit of fear. But the Bible says, when you keep your mind stayed on, stayed him, on him, he'll keep you in, in perfect, perfect peace. peace. So guess what? <laughs> Just keep your mind on him. Yay! Just keep your mind on him. Talk, sir. It'll keep you keep your mind on him. The fear, it, it'll leave. It, it won't even be there. One thing is like, oh, thank you, kind sir. I will say that. One thing about, one thing about the devil, he does not like you thinking about the Lord. No. <laughs> That's why the mother, the old church used to say, when I think about the, the goodness, goodness of Jesus ah! and all that is done for me, my soul cries out. Pastor Hallelujah. Jay. See, that's what Pastor it is. Jay. Pastor yeah. Jay. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on. Well, as I go further, I, I mean, I don't even want to stop you. I just want to let you flow. But no, go ahead. Go right ahead. here. In the same chapter, chapter 29, you said you've seen that you now know the difference between sight and vision. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, as, see, 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 you can see, but you can see wrong. 
Come on here. But when you have sight, the Bible says, Jesus said, I give sight to the blind. To the blind. He said, he never said, I give vision. <laughs> 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 he never said, I give vision. He said, Pastor I give, Jay, teach us on tonight. I, I give sight to the blind. And any time that God gives you sight, he gives you insight. Mm. Anytime that God gives you sight, he gives you insight. And when God gives you insight, that's when vision comes. But All you right. don't have vision until you have insight. Oh, God. He, he allows you to see what other people can't see. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he allowed you to see what people don't have the ability to see because he has given you sight. He has given you insight. He's giving you insight. He's giving you insight. And he's giving you insight. Guess what? He's giving you, he's giving you knowledge. He's giving you knowledge to see what he's up to. <laughs> he's giving you, he's giving you sight to see what he's up to. What he's up to. You know, he prophesied in part. So he's gonna give you a glimpse. He's gonna give you a glimpse. <laughs> he's gonna say, This is where I'm up to. This, this, is, this is what is I'm where, up to. This is where I'm up to. Because he's giving, he's giving, he's giving sight to the blind. He's giving sight. The reason why he told them to don't tell nobody when they go, he said, don't tell nobody about me. Don't even tell nobody about the miracle. God told them just to do um, reverse psychology on them because he already knew because they had sight, they was going to tell it. <laughs> because they had to tell the insight of the miracle. Mm. And even them, they couldn't explain how he got how he got healed. He just said there's a man named Jesus. <laughs> and and he put he put mud, watch this. He yeah. put mud on my eyes. Watch this. And he put he, he put spit. He put spit in the mud and then he made it up and put it on my eyes. But watch this. The spiritual, the spiritual part of that is that if 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 you look at the text, after he put the mud, he said, now what you see. And the mm -hmm. man began to describe <laughs> what he saw. But the thing about it is, how did you know? My question is, how did you know <laughs> where the pool was? Yeah. <laughs> how, how did you know where the pool was? Because it never indicated that Jesus led him to the pool. Come but on here. He says he sent him to the pool. He said, go to the pool. And when you get to the pool, wash your face. How did you know that that was where the pool was? Because if you look at the history, that was where they did the waste. That's where they did all of the messed up stuff. That's where all the trash went. So guess what? He did not have natural sight, but he had spiritual faith. Oh, faith led them to somewhere you would normally wouldn't go with the eyesight that you have. Oh, God, he, he, you wouldn't even go there because if he would have saw where he was getting ready to wash his face with, he would have never went. And that's what God would do. He would literally blind you naturally and cause your spiritual sight to activate. So where you where he telling you to go, you will go without any hesitation. You wouldn't even have that because sometimes he know your faith won't even mount up to where you belong. Talk, sir. So God will help you. He will lend a hand to you and have you go to somewhere. Guess what? He will have you go to Lodabar and get yeah. back and go back to the enemy's camp and steal everything and take back everything that you were stolen from here. But guess what? The scary part is when we're looking out of our natural eye. When you're looking at your natural eyes, you'll begin to see that I can't go there. I'm not built for that. I don't belong in the room. I don't belong there. This is too hard for me. I'm going to hurt myself. I don't know. They might not like me. But sometimes God will blind you. He will close your eyes so you'll be able to see where he needs you to go without any hesitation. He will. He will. He will. He he will. He will. He will. I promise you he will. I know he will. Yeah, yeah, he will. <laughs> he will. And I'm so glad you 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 saw you saw the insight <laughs> through the yeah. spiritual eye. I'm so yeah. glad you saw that yeah. and you decided to answer the call. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's dive into this a little bit more. Sir, yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you, kind spirit. Ah, uh, uh, Pastor Jay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As we move along, chap chapter three. Uh huh. I, when I told you I read this book, pa Pastor Jay, it hit home. It, some of this stuff hit home, and I, I'm a, I touch and agree with you, but I never experienced this portion right yeah. here. Yeah. Where you actually saw your mother sell drugs. I was right beside her. Where, where, where you was actually there. I was right beside her. I was, I was right beside her. Most people don't want to tell the story because they all want to let people know my parents used to do X, Y, and Z. But I believe mm -hmm. there's, there's blessing in the stories of struggle. There's a blessing in the story of a struggle. I watched my mother run the streets of DC, Washington, DC, not only take care of children that wasn't even hers, but I watched her come home and comb hair, brush hair, grease hair, give bath, do homework, cook, clean, and take care of everybody else but herself. But but herself. And but but then she worked at nine to five and still sold drugs. And everywhere I everywhere she went, I went with her. I saw my mother cut dope. I saw her cook dope. I saw uh, uh, um, it was it was something called um, uh, acid back there and boat. And anybody mm -hmm. know what boat is? Is is one of the strongest drugs now? Well. Is the strong? It's still the strongest drug than than even PCP or or uh, water, <coughs> which I call it. But I saw her measure it. I saw her um, um, sell pills and um, oxycontins and um, these little blue and red pills all through DC General and stuff like that. I was right there on the hours of three o'clock in the morning. I'm right there going to people's houses that I didn't even know, sleeping on their couches while they did their thing because I wanted to be around my mother, but I believe my mother um, was preparing me for her departure. She was showing me because God showed her what I was going to have to endure. My so God. she showed me, she prepared me so I wouldn't have the lack of knowledge of where I was getting ready to go. That goes back right. into insight. God right. gave her sight so <clears throat> she could have insight to where I was going. Yeah, I, yeah. Let me say that again. God gave her sight so she could have insight to my future. And and that's that's right there was a mother because she allowed me to see her wrong because she knew it was going to turn around for right. She knew it. She knew it. She said, this is what God wanted because none of my siblings from my oldest to the to to well to to uh the one that's older than me, um nobody have ever seen that. They 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 seen they they heard she did drugs but never seen it. They heard her did this but they never seen it. I was there right there. I, I and it was many times my mother did not come home. You know she would say that I was devastated because I should have been the one out there protecting her. So I I when she did leave me behind, I, I sat by the door waiting for her. She always used to tell me she was coming back. She was coming back. She was coming back. And but I this particular day. This particular day, she didn't come back. She didn't come back. I walked down the street, she come from out of school now. <coughs> I never forget it. I came from out of school and, and she wasn't in her her proper place that she was she normally would be. And I that right there, I couldn't articulate it at 10 years old. But I, I knew something was wrong. Yeah, yeah. And even even why everybody me going to the hospital and she transitioning um, um, in my arms and um, it still didn't dawn on me that she was gone until the day I walked down and I saw her um, in her casket. My and I God. and I said to myself as a little boy, "That's not Mama's bed. That's not a bed. That's that's not." That's not where she normally rests at. Right, right. And right there, my body went numb. Jesus. To the world, period. When you say numb to the world, wait. I mean, 
numb to the world because I know that opened up a can of worms in itself. But how, <clears throat> my God, because you no longer had your mother there, what, mm -hmm. <clears throat> who was your rock along yeah. with your father? But like you said, you, you, you and her was like this. You, when you seen one, you seen the other one. So, at, and, yeah. and then at the age so early of 10. Yeah. How did that, what, what's, oh my goodness, I don't even know what questions to ask, but how did that make you feel, feel an abandoned and now you got you the loss of your mom and she wasn't really there to tell you as you grew up how to treat a woman or how to, what's, what's expected because you was 10. Well, I mean, did. you knew the mannerisms. You knew yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You know, at the age of 10, this is my girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? This is yeah. just my girlfriend. Yeah. How did you learn the, the aspect of, of another woman other than cooking and cleaning and washing clothes, what you saw her do? Well, well, my mother was, was very <clears throat> unique. And I, like I told you, she, she gave insight. God gave her sight to have insight on my future. So a lot of things that it's expected um, of my father doing. My father at the time was a tractor trailer driver. So he was all okay. over the road. So my mother took me boxing. She told me what the, was the difference between a salad fork from a dinner fork. She showed me how to wash the dishes. She showed me how to open and close the door. She showed me how to give gifts. She showed me how to give more than receive. She showed me things at an early age that typical parents would say he's not old enough. But again, because she had insight to my future, she prepared me. <laughs> she prepared me. She prepared me for the real world. So when she transitioned, it wasn't that I was unprepared. It was that I didn't understand the transition because... Yes. The people that were still living did not explain death to me. Nobody wow. explained death to me. So they left it to for my own, my own self, my own will to figure out it on their own, on my own. So so just imagine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 mm -hmm. years old, and you're trying to figure out death. You're trying to figure out, and, and if I could be <coughs> honest with you, I was so angry that I started telling God who he could have took. <laughs> who who he could have took besides my mother, you know, um, because I was I was numb. I was numb. And I wasn't a numb, disrespectful um type of child. I wasn't right. reckless. I wasn't I wasn't this bad child. I wasn't none of that. I, I was just a child that was confused. And then I started to look for a void that was never there. That was never there. That, and was, that you know, was never. You know what, Pastor Jay? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. We all tend to do that, though. We we all tend to look for a void in some shape, form, or fashion, whether it be streets, drugs, sex, alcohol. We all tend to do those things. Yeah. Yeah. And we, but, do. <clears throat> we do. We do. My God, we do, we do. Um, but you know, when you when when you when you find yourself in the state of confusion, of 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 being confused, you have to now position yourself and let God take over. Yeah, yeah. Because because in the state of uh, of you being confused, you can hurt a lot of people. Come on now, you, talk you about can it. Hurt, you can hurt a lot of people. You can let a lot of people down. Yeah. Um, because the truth of the matter is, and, and this is this is the reason people don't take time out to learn your story. That's it. They, they they see the outer appearance, they see how well you look, they see how how good your shape is. They, they didn't hear some things about you. And, mm -hmm. and the physical attraction is what they're focusing on. But they don't even understand behind all of that, you got somebody that's dealing with some pain mm -hmm. and, and and some people that need some different kind of love i ain't talking about this i love you because you're doing this i love you because it's a good time 
but to love you through your flaws, to love you through the pain, to say, I don't even have all the answers, but I know who does. I know who does. And we can pray about this thing. That's the type of people that you want around you. That's the type of people that yeah. that's how I made it. And 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 I must admit, it wasn't family. <laughs> it, it it wasn't it wasn't family that that literally got me here, you know. Um, it wasn't family. So so um, but it was strangers. It was strangers. It's, it's it, always it, strangers, ain't it? It was some strangers that told me you can do it. You're gonna be. I know you got kids, but you're gonna do it. I, I, I one baby mother, but you're gonna do it. They 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 push me. They kept on pushing me. They kept on pushing me. And, and to be be honest with you, um, um, I love strangers because they ain't got nothing to prove. <laughs> now, family, family wanted to pretend, pretend. Church people wanted to pretend as if they had it all together. But a stranger said, "I ain't got nothing to prove." Oh, got nothing and, to and prove. And some of them, some of them didn't even see me after that fact. They just imparted, gave me some nuggets, and went on about their business. And went on about their business. Yeah. They did exactly what God told them to do. That's it. Drop it right here on JJ and let yeah. him take it over from here, and the Holy Ghost going to be his guide. That's right. And right there. Right then and there. <laughs> Pastor J, oh, my God. Okay. Um. So where did you see yourself? In your teenager years, what did you have to endure coming from the, the 10 year old to now leaving high school and, and furthering yourself as a, as a now a young adolescent? So I know you ran into some things. I know you was on that bicycle running fast speed, like you said, on the playground. I know it didn't stop there. So where did it, where did it take you from there? Well, it, you know, I never, I never, school was, school was, was, I had, I found my favorite areas in school. Okay. And math was my, my, um, my good subject. I, I, okay. I love math. I love <coughs> science because I like to cut stuff and dissect stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so school became attractive. Then I became popular. And once the popularity came because I was selling dope. Mm -hmm. I'm selling dope. So I didn't have no problem because I had, watch this, I had supplements to, to, to keep my mind away from them. Let me say that again. I had supplements to keep my mind away from my struggle. What, what do I mean about supplements? I had yeah. money. I had, I had women. I had friends. I had cars. I had all of that that made me put this to the side mm -hmm. to keep focusing. So um, my 12th grade, yeah, I played sports. I played basketball. I played football. Football was my thing. Track, I love running. You know, you're from Southeast. You had to run. You know, <laughs> you had to run. So I run and running. duck. And run I, and duck. Run. You hear me? So so I went there. I went to Blaisburg. When I went to DeMatha, I went to Blaisburg High School. My 11th grade year, going into my 12th year, I got an offer. God gave me a, a literally escape from the hood. Um, so I went to, my sister lived in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and I f ended up going to live with her my 12th grade year, going to, watch this, <laughs> a all-white school. Wow. All-white. It's probably 10 black people in the school, 10 black people. I went there to an unfamiliar place. But can I tell you something, Michelle? When God sings you somewhere, he has sing you somewhere two things, where people don't like you or people that's going to embrace you. And when I went there, them people, I'll, not my color skin, embraced me and helped me through my 12th grade year. Come on now. And from there, I transitioned and went to school from there. Once again, strangers. 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 In, in a strange land. In a strange land. <laughs> strangers in a strange land. Absolutely. Stepped in once again and decided to help little JJ. That's it. That's it. Man. Okay. Let's, let's keep moving on. Uh, how 
know that you was talking in your book too, and I want you to um expound on that. Man look on the outside. Yeah. God looks on the heart. Yeah. So, and I heard you say too, you asked God to, <clears throat> you made a covenant with God. Yeah. Versus conviction, yeah. you made a covenant. My God, when I read, I yeah. told you, you had me in here crying, boy. You had me in here crying. But the covenant that you made with God, because mm -hmm. I'm going to leave some, y'all better go get this book. The covenant you and God made. You playing it out and it's manifesting even before our very eyes right now. Absolutely. I want you to expound and talk about the covenant, if if you will, and and how it positioned you to who you become. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? When people say covenant, covenant, they think that it's going to be um all peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. they, they, they think it's going to be peaches and cream, like it's going to be a fly by night. Once you make a covenant with God, that's when hell break loose. That's, that's when hell break loose. So through, through my covenant with God, and, and even the day that I surrendered selling drugs at the age of 25, um, I literally said that I'm not going to go back to, to the street life. He literally saved me from facing 80 years to life. Um, I had 18 counts um, of conspiracy um, and each count served 12 years. Um, uh, once he saved me from that and escaped me that and literally expunged my whole history in the street, um, I began to say, God, if you did this, you have to do this. No! And God said, deal. And I began to work at it, but I still had a struggle. My God. <laughs> See, people, people, people think because you make a covenant with God and you escape one struggle or one addiction, mm -hmm. he's literally going to literally make you pure. That's not how God does. Talk what about the struggle. He keeps something on your side. Paul put it like this. He said, I got a thorn in my in flesh. My flesh. <laughs> And 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 I'm, I'm you put it there. I'm 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 coming to you uh, not one time, but not two times, but three times. I'm coming to you for help, and all you say to me is, "God, <laughs> my grace is sufficient." It's sufficient. And 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 one thing that even Sheesh. walking through the covenant with of, of God, um, even with the addiction that I had um, with sex and stuff like that. Um, I began to feel guilty, convicted of some things, some area, and I would go to God and tell God, take this from me. You know what I'm saying? Because if you take this, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't right. do drugs, right. I ain't smoking no drugs, I ain't tasting no drugs, but if you take this away, if you take it away, if you take this away, I'll be all right. I'll be the man that you need me to be. Just sustain it. And God said, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, and even over my life, having kids, you know, I'm like, God, this is not a good look, you know, because now I'm in church. I'm always come, been in church. Come so on, like, this ain't a good look. So now the church is uh, 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 crucifying me. You know what I'm saying? So I leave church at the age of 17 years old. I leave church at age 17, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But even in the process of leaving church, I never lost his principles. Ah! I never lost his principle. So so even when I was in the street and doing everything I wanted to do, I still paid my tithes with drug money. You, I still, you did I what? still sold. I still I paid tithes with drug money. Oh my goodness. Not 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 after I read up, not after none of that. I paid it off the top. Whatever I earned, that's what I I sold it. Then what I was left over, then I went back. But I was never, I was, you know, gracefully, I was never a corner boy. I was never a nickel and dime dude. So, so, so I literally held weight. So the money that I had is, it was the money that I earned. My. <clears throat> so, so, so covenant, when you're talking about covenant, man, you, you prepare, prepare for battle, prepare for battle. Talk prepare, about it. Prepare, Talk about prepare it. Prepare for battle. When you covenant with God, the, the enemy 
what you're saying to the enemy, the enemy has no chance for you. He has mm -hmm. no chance. Tell him to take his eviction notice, his emergency eviction notice, and go somewhere back to hell and, and, and never trouble you again. <laughs> and that's when the enemy wants to fight. He wants to that's fight. That's when he gets mad. Because, because you no longer belong to him. You no Talks. longer in covenant with him, but you're in covenant with God. Oh, my goodness. And, of course, the enemy ain't going to let you just walk away from him. <laughs> he ain't gonna let you do that so He's of not. course this this means war i'm glad somebody said this means war of yeah, course yeah. yeah it is this this is this is this is war even we were right now we're in the middle of uh of the pandemic and 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 <clears throat> the devil has literally tested our faith it wasn't god come on now it was the devil you don't the think devil it says the devil says if you take all of their ability to shop, all of their mm -hmm. ability to do X, Y, and Z, they ain't gonna follow directions. They ain't gonna do this. Take them out of their comfort zone, comfort zone. And, and create a new way of living. He said, then they curse you to your face because guess what? You don't have access the way you used to. So now you have to. Be, now you have to know. No longer just to go what the way that God wants you to go. Now you have to literally find out the insight of his instructions. And this pandemic right here is not for the unbelievers. This is for the believers. Yeah! So God can get the attention of his children. He's trying to give you sight so you can have insight. Sir, yeah. I, I truly believe that is so. Yeah, I truly believe that is so. Oh my goodness, y'all have to go get this book. I'm gonna say it again Confessions of a Chosen go Vessel. Get it. Go get it. Go get it. The book of Joshua. I mean, like I said, it is so much inf information in here his struggle, yeah. his trials, how he overcame the enemy and still overcoming the enemy to this day. Yeah. It's a daily walk. <laughs> It's it truly it's a daily walk. It's a but daily But you, you, the thing you you said yes. Yeah. yeah. You told God yes. Yeah. That's that's and, the, that's half of the battle. It's saying yes. You 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 have to say yes first. You you have to say yes first. Before before you enter the army, they they swear you in. <laughs> 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 you don't see. The physical training until after you say yes. You say yes. <laughs> then here comes the training, and the training come here come the war. It's because after the yes, that's when everything takes place. Pastor Jay, I... it takes place. It takes I'm... place. It takes place because you got to think about it. At least you, you go through training. <laughs> <laughs> he he sends you through basic training to through prepare the for spiritual warfare. Come He's on, let you know in the middle of, of 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 the basic training, you're not training to be against flesh and blood. All right, but you're training to fight the spiritual wickedness in high, in places. high places. That's where the purpose and the significance about basic training. After you say yes, but we 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 want it. People as as humans as Christians, we want to prepare and, and and to how to ignore people, how, how how to roll our eyes at people, how 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 to get to a certain level of ministry and look down on people. We think training is about that, but come on now, it's not about that because it says we wrestle not against flesh and flesh blood. and blood. So the spiritual wickedness get, get in high places. Nerves in, 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 in this, in, in, at the job place, the people that's 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 fighting you every day, your family is that's ignoring you and and causing all this kind of drama, and your girlfriend, your, your sisters, and and your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, causing all that drama. It ain't them. You will know that if you went through the basis training. That Come God on was now. To give you, but we Come on now. Skip that. We want to skip that because we. We 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 don't want to take we don't want to take the test. Well, and you don't want to go through the process. You don't want to go through the process. Even in the army, you have to take a test, even in training. 
<laughs> they they test you. They test training. you in training to, to see, see how you much qualify. you know already. <laughs> to see if you qualify. <laughs> Pastor J. Just to see if you qualify. They want to know if you qualify. Ish. Because everybody ain't qualified. Yeah, Just like he said not. in his word. Many Everybody's are called, but only a few are chosen. Few are chosen. I tell That's people all the day I've been called and chosen. All right. Because you can't be chosen without being called. The called. <laughs> Listen, see, the Bible says people perish because of lack because of knowledge. Lack you of read knowledge. the scripture and say, oh, I'm this chosen. How was you chosen if you never was called? It's levels to it. it, it it's levels. It's just levels like I, just like when we first opened up this broadcast, I came out of the book of Jeremiah, the prophet. Yeah. And he said, before I formed thee in the belly of I your mother, knew you. I knew you. I called you. I called you as and a chosen you, And then it goes on in, in one particular uh, scripture. It says, <laughs> when I was a child, I spoke, I spoke, as, a I child. spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I, I put, put away, away childish, childish things. So when I guess what? I was called. I was informed. Called. Uh -huh. Informed. Called. Informed. That I was chosen. <laughs> yeah. You got to look at it. You got to look at the whole text. I was called because I was informed that I was chosen. <laughs> listen. Listen, Michelle. I don't want to hold up this live. But I, I just stopped by to let somebody know, yeah, you've been called and chosen because God had to call you to inform you that you was chosen. You was chosen. <laughs> yeah, I will leave that alone. Because that's God enough right there. That's enough right there to go in, baby, all by itself. But, okay, Jay, I ain't going to hold you up because I know you got plethoras and many other things to no, do, I'm sir. Good. You just go ahead. Go ahead. I baby. mean. <clears throat> You've given us so much. This is so much food. This is so much insight. Yeah. <clears throat> There's so much intel. I mean, honestly, Jay, that's the whole point of Testimonial Tuesday. Absolutely. For the simple fact, it allows you an opportunity to tell your story. Yeah. And and, and the, the, the way it actually happened, not yeah. based upon hearsayism or what somebody thought they heard. It's coming from the horse's mouth. The horse's and, mouth, not, not only is coming from the horse's mouth, people people will always make up stories. Exactly. But those are the ones that won't tell their story. Come on now. Because <laughs> it's always two sides to it's a story. Four sides. It's four sides. Clear it's two it up. Truth uh huh. And two false. All right. Because in every, because when you're looking at a square, it has four corners. Right. And when you're dealing with that type of drama, it's always in a box. So you got a truth side of you and they got a false side of them. They got a truth side of them and they got a false side of them. So you have to understand that it's a box that is two truths and it's two false. That somewhere down the line, if it if it goes outside of the box, some false gonna come out of it. Some false. <laughs> and some Sir? false gonna come out. <laughs> some false is gonna jump out of that. Some truth gonna jump out of that. And by, by the time it get down to the real nitty gritty, guess what? You got a bunch of truth and false. <laughs> so guess what? How do you identify the truth without going to the horse's mouth? Come on now. You got to get on it. Now. You got to get it. You got to get, get it. it straight there. And I've I, I never been a problem. I've never been a, uh, a person that's been scared to tell this truth. Right. I just had to wait to the right, the right time. Ecclesiastes says it's a time to talk and a time to be silent. Come on now. And God allowed me to be silent for so many reasons. For so many. Um, um, as I was a child growing up and going into my 30s, it's because he knew if he would allow me to, re to release it, I would have released it out of anger. Yeah. And instead of releasing it out of peace and joy. And love. And love. He, he, I would have released it out of anger. So God said, I'm going to remain silent. I'm going to build your story while you're silent. And then when it's time to open up your mouth, he yeah. said, you're going to have a major impact over this nation. 
So my mother, my mother, my mother um, encounter with God is literally manifesting um, before people's eyes. I'm glad she was a praying woman and yes. a woman of faith. Because along with her faith, reaching the heaven's doors yeah. and pricking on the very heart of our Savior who sits on the throne. He's a throne sitter. Ah! Yeah. Her faith met his divine appointment with you and his Absolutely. purpose. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Jay, Pastor Jay, before we go, <clears throat> I want you in your own way, sir because you you're very unique and i yeah. thank god for your authenticity i thank god for your originality and i thank god for you being transparent as much as possible mm -hmm. i mean what, what not only in this pandemic before the pandemic during the pandemic after the pandemic because it's not gonna always be like this but what would you encourage <clears throat> excuse me what would you encourage the people how would you inspire them what what words would you give as motivational tools to enlighten them to I, keep I, pressing I, I, I would tell them embrace the delay yeah! embrace the delay be, expound on that and embrace the delay it's, I told the people uh, last night, I was on the live, and I told the people last night that it's nowhere in history that a delay has ever been canceled. <laughs> that a delay has ever been canceled. And I heard God say, I'm the only one that can cancel delays. Let me encourage you tonight that the delay has literally cost you and literally protected you from a, a, a major disaster. When you're looking at when you're looking at um, the delays in in, in, in in airports and planes and flights and stuff like that, and the, the stool is somebody that comes on and they say, there's a delay for an hour and 15 minutes, or there's a delay for two hours or three hours. Note that there's a issue there's an issue that could cost your life. There's an issue that could cost your life. And sometimes you have to literally, and this is what people have to understand, you have to now operate in patience so you'll be able to embrace the delay. So guess what? So God can clear the runway. So <laughs> not you, not your mother, not your friends, but you want God to clear the runway. If God does not clear the runway, you're literally subject to a danger and a major disaster. Sometimes when they say delay, when God say delay, just wait. That's why the Bible says, and look at the text, the Bible says, they that wait. Upon the Lord. On, upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. He shall renew, renew their strength. strength. And you will mount up. You get ready to take off. With and wings. wings as Talk, wings. sir. And you're going to walk and not think. You're gonna, you're gonna, and you're going to run and not worry. You, you <clears throat> have to learn how to wait on the Lord. Because Isaiah. in waiting, there <laughs> is strength. Sheesh. And, and delays their strength. And, 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 and delays their strength. And let me encourage you. Just because Talk, you was sir. delayed, you was never denied. Oh God! Just because you was delayed, it did not happen this year. Um, um, um. You had now got to go back to the table to re-strategize some things. Just because it did not happen this year, guess what? It's not. It doesn't mean that you're denied. It only means that you are getting ready to experience a restructure and re-strategize moment of your life that God needs you to get you into. So get you in a place, a head space, a mind space. He's trying to get your heart right. He's trying to get your family right. He's just trying to get you together before he sends you out on the runway to take off. Because guess what? Many of times we try to take everything with us. But God said in this season, you can take off with dead weight. Yeah. 
can't take off with dead weight. You can't take off with your bestie and your 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 homeboy. You can't take off with all that stress and anxiety and all that confusion and all that gossip. God said, I'm not allowing you to take off until you release it. And in this day and time, he's using the delay for you to embrace it to clean yourself up. He's getting ready. To, that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to clean yourself up. So embrace it today. Sit back. Go back to the table. Talking to business owners. Go back to the table. Get your pen pan. Go buy a new one. Throw the old one away and start writing again. Because the Bible says you write the vision and you'll make it plain. Make it plain. So that everybody <clears throat> that, that feel like you can't go back to school. It's all over for you. Go back to the, to the table. And try it again. Listen, listen. Try it again. Try it again. You failed in one marriage. Go back and try it again. Because in the delay, in the delay, that is your learning ground. That's your learning ground. And God has given you the ability to wait on him so he can give you strength. Listen, embrace the delay. It's not going to cost you nothing, but it can cost you everything. If you be disobedient to the instructions of God and every delay is ordained by God, every, if you look at a plane, they come nine out of 10, they'll tell you it was malfunctioning, the bad weather, <laughs> we couldn't fly because there was a storm coming. You have to learn how to be patient because there's something that's ahead that you're not built for. And God is trying to protect you. He's trying to protect you. Listen, embrace the delay. Listen, you're going to lose some friends yeah. in the embracing season. You might have to switch churches in the embracing season. Talk, sir. You got some loved ones that's going to walk away. But guess what? You remain faithful to the embrace because God is going to turn that thing around. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that, that all, all things work together for, for the, the good, good of them. Ah! Of them that's Who called, called according to his purpose. And Man. because you are in his purpose, because you embrace the delay. Pastor Jay, um, sir, I thank God for you. I really do, bro. I thank God for you. I mean, the the insight, the wisdom, the the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost has truly is upon you. Uh, Counsel, you. understanding, yeah. his wisdom, and most of all, ah, that one we don't want to talk about, the fear of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm just, I'm eternally grateful for your obedience. And I thank God for you. I really do, sir. I ain't going to, I ain't going to stop you. Whatever the good Lord tell you to do. I want you to just go ahead and have your way. But I mean, to you, you say, go keep, my God, you gave us so much. Go back to the bank. That marriage ain't over. It's, it's just, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not once they, once they, once you learn how to embrace in the embrace, it's comfort. Yeah. <laughs> but in, it's comfort. It's comfort. It's security. Because the truth of the matter is, why I'm delayed, I'm still planted. <laughs> so 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 even even in this, I might not have everything I need or everything I want, but I'm still planted. You still planted. I, 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 listen, I, I I may not be feeling good in my body. But I'm still planted. I'm still planted. I'm still planted. I didn't go to 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 the ward show this time, but right now I'm still planted. I'm pl I'm still planted. And let me let you know when you're planted, guess what? You are reaping the herbs, the 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 the, 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 the knowledge, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding from the earth, from God's. God is literally giving it to you. He's literally giving to you what he wants. See, that's one thing about, that's the importance of sowing. That's the importance of sowing in this season. Because when, you, when you're sowing in this season, you're literally sowing into wet soil. 
your so your sowing into wet soil. Anytime you're sowing into wet soil, it's immediately grow. Oh God, oh God, because the soil has already been uh, it's already been fertilized. It's already yes, been watered. And and in this season, you have to learn how to give. Um, when God tells you to give, because in this season, the soil has already been blessed. It's already been blessed. So while you're embracing the delay, guess what you're going to do? You have to sow so you can reap a media miracle. God is going to start blessing people in the middle of this pandemic. I promise you, he's going to start blessing in the middle of the pandemic. And watch what God do. That's literally going to shock the hell out of your friends, out of your family members, out of your naysayers, out of your people you don't even know that hate you. And God is getting ready to show the miracle signs and wonders outside of your life because you stay put when everybody wanted to take off and sooner than later you're going to see them falling from the sky you're going to see them falling you're going to see them falling from the top all the way down to the bottom because they did not embrace the delay they went on to their own understanding the bible says lean not to your own understanding but acknowledge him in all that ways beast because just because you acknowledge God in all his ways, God is saying, now while you're planning and on the foundation, he said, I'm getting ready to give you miracles, signs, and wonder. Even in the pandemic, he said, I'm getting ready to give it to you. He said, when I give it to you this time, when you take off this time, you're going to land safely. When you take off this time, you're going to reach the altitude that you belong to. Because when you, oh God, this is, this is important of being cleared for the one way when you get to a certain altitude if you are not approved there can be another oh god another thing coming in your direction and you can be unexpected because if you know anything about planes they can fly even when they can't see oh god they can fly even when they can't see even when they can't see they can still fly it's because they got some people on the ground that can see for them. Oh, Talk, sir. You ain't got some people on the ground that can see what they can't see. And if you go up, oh God, go to a, a altitude that's not, that you have not been cleared for, guess what? You are uncovered and you're in for a disaster. And Shit. sometimes you just got to wait until God clear you for the runway. Because when God clear you the one way, he's going to order your steps. He yeah. said the steps of a yeah, woman, yeah, oh, yeah. woman he is going to order by God. And when God order your steps, he keeps you from hurt, harms, or danger. When God orders your steps, he, yeah, he, yeah. he sees what you don't see. He's your personal navigation system. He he may tell you the detour. He he may tell you um, um to pull over and wait a while because the storm is too much. He may say there's something in the road, but listen to me. If you disobey his voice, you'll understand that it's something. Oh God, I'm not even here. I feel so holy. So I'm in this place. Shake. I feel holy ghost in this place. Oh, you'll God. understand that your your, your excitement. Is to wait. Oh God. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to um, take this to be assignment, but excitement is can be a waiting period. Assignment is a it can be waiting. Just wait. Your assignment is just to wait. What is a waiting period? I'm just gonna wait and I'm gonna get me together. I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna push everybody else to success. I'm gonna sit back and watch everybody else get um elevated. I'm gonna sit back and watch everybody else drive the business and the rose well because sooner or later God is going to release me for takeoff yeah. it's going to release me he's going to release me from takeoff and when I take off I'm, he's going to be my eyes in my ears he's going to be my guy he's going to be the bridge over troubled water he's going to be the bread and the storm the land because he said if you seek my my kingdom first he said all of these things will be added unto you and that's where it comes with being obedient to him first so I encourage you tonight. Stay right there. 
and embrace <laughs> the delay. Your delay is for a purpose. And for some of you, your assignment is just to wait. Some of you, your assignment is just to be silent. Sometimes mama, mama, your Dios. assignment is just to give. And you may not receive anything from the people that you gave to. But sometimes this may be your assignment. It's just to pour out. To pour out to people. And watch people smile up chant. Watch mm. people smile again. Watch people get their joy back. Watch people get their peace back. Watch people get their love of God. This might be your assignment during your delay. And that's why you can't be selfish in this season. Yeah, yeah. You can't be selfish in this season. But you got to be faithful in this season. Even when it don't feel good. Ah! Still got to be faithful. You got to be. You got to be yeah. faithful. Because God is protecting you from something ahead. Stay right there. Stay the course. And guess what? This race, this race, this race, you're going to win it. You're going to win it. Sooner or later. Sooner or God later. God is going to perfect that thing. Concerning that you. Concerning you. And he's going to turn that thing around sooner or later. He's going to do it. Just stay the course and trust God. He got you. He got you. Pastor J, my God. I don't know about y'all. Y'all know. Y'all know I don't usually do this. But God just let it to my heart. Y'all, and I'm, I'm, I'm sincere when I say this. You ought to sow a seed in this man of God. <laughs> Y'all know this is my first time taking a seed offering. Don't, and hear me, hear me clearly. Don't send it to me. Wow. I don't want it. I want you to give seed to the sower. Ah, because he just sowed into your life. A life-changing experience. <laughs> wow. Don't don't give it to me. I listen to me very carefully. Wow. Follow the instructions of the Holy Ghost. Wow. Wow. I want you to give to this man of God. You need to understand the spirit of the Lord is subject to the prophet. Yeah. And he yeah. comes to make change. He comes to make warning. He comes to make direction. He comes to Babandiosha. Don't give it to me. I need for anyone that's a part of Pastor J team to put down there his his cash app, his Zelle, his whatever it is where he receives his his blessings from the Lord. Put it in the comments. Mamandiosha, give. The Bible says in St. Luke 6 and 38. Give. And Thank it shall you, be given unto you. Ah, press Thank down, you, shaken together, and run it over. Shall Thank men you, begin uh, to give into your bosom. Thank you, Jesus. We're sowing, we're sowing into the anointing of God. Thank we're you, sowing Jesus. into, because God had his hands on him. Ah, you, and he could have given up a long time ago. He could have told God no, but God said, nah, not so. And Thank because you, he stayed faithful in the midst of it all. Thank you, uh, Jesus. God gives seed to the sower. He said, I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. I'm compelling you to give. And y'all know, this is the first, thank you, kind spirit. I never went this route because he didn't tell me to, but I have to be obedient to what he told me to do. Don't give to me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't want it. Listen Thank to me. Jesus. I didn't do Thank this you, broadcast Jesus. to collect anything. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but a starving soul. Thank you, I, the only reason I did this broadcast is bring someone out of darkness into the marvelous light. But I want to be a blessing to this man of God because he took the Thank time you, out of his schedule. 
to tell his testimony that someone's going to get changed. Someone's going to be delivered. Someone's going to be set free, healed. And y'all, please, just, I, I can't. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For laying it on my heart. I, and, and right now, it's not even about an amount. I just want you to give. Give because you know whatever a man soweth, Thank you, Jesus. that same very thing he's going to reap. And if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow grudgingly, you're Thank also you. going to reap grudgingly. But we, I want you to give because I want you to get something back in return. And what he given us in this season was not just a testimony of his life. He gave us a testimony for his mother, his father, the hand of God that was upon him. Thank yep. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But God, whatever, however you see fit, I'm not even going to put a number on it because the Bible say, according to thy faith, yeah. Yeah, he's given every man a measure of faith. And the Bible say, according to thy faith. But I do know what he says. Yeah. If you begin to sow, Thank you, Jesus. he gives seed to the sower. I'm compelling you. I beseech you. However you see fit, the cash app may be up there. Whoever, Toya, Andre, whoever that person is to put it, go back and, and reach out to this brother through his cash app. Be a blessing because he was a blessing to us. My God, y'all know I don't do this. I don't, I don't do it. I've never done it. Pastor Jay, you are the, you are the first person wow. Wow. that I ask wow. the viewers Blessings. to give a seed. Wow, blessings, blessings. Because I had to be led by the spirit to do it. I had to be obedient. Blessings, blessings. And that's what he told me to do. So I'm going to be obedient. Blessings. I just hope the people of God is obedient and just begin to give. Yeah. His cash app is there. You, The people who's already in his on his team already is already up there. Just get, get, And I'm not putting a number on it. Yeah. I want you to give according to thy faith. Because I know you're going to reap it. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, even a thousand fold is going to be your turnaround. Indeed. Not only he gave us testimony, but he's given us Bible tonight. He's given us a preached word. He already said the ground was fertile. It is. <laughs> it's it's wet. Sure. It's it's wet. wet. He already said the ground is fertile and it's wet. And it has been, it's been turned for you. It's your due diligence to give in the season like this, in the season of famine. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna hold you long, but Pastor Jay, um, thank you all. I mean, I am eternally grateful, sir, for your obedience and for your life and for the anointing that God has bestowed upon you. Yes, and as I pray and watch um, Living to Make Change and take over on Mondays, uh, y'all go follow this brother on Facebook Live, um, at Preacher CEO on, on Instagram. And he yes. also has a YouTube channel. Go follow this brother. You got three streams on how you can follow him. Yeah. I'm telling you, a powerful, awesome man of God. Yeah. And spite of his life in spite of his history in spite of his shortcomings the bible say i know your uprisings as well as your down settings god still <laughs> god still has his hand up on yeah. you sir yes and yeah. i'm eternally grateful i i promise you i won't go be I, th that's it but y'all already know too before 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 i leave <laughs> they ask him what is his what is his uh Facebook page? I'm a, let me see, let me see if I can highlight some of this stuff. What is his Facebook page? Toya, if you up here, baby, I know you are. You can put it up there. Andre, if you up there, I have somebody else. Deshaun Wilson, thank you, sir, for putting this up there. This, here go his PayPal. Here go his um some of his followers, as well as myself, join him Thursday for prayer at 730. Thank you, Toya Latoya. Pastor Latoya Benson is putting on Facebook, Living to Make Changes, his Facebook page. 
I thank God for each and every last one of you who's appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate everyone who's um thank don't you. mind giving and being a part of his ministry, listening to his testimony. You have uh Deshaun Wilson doing that. What is it? JDJ International. His cash app is done. Thank you, people of God, for giving. God, God, thank you, Lord God. We, he already know he gives seed to the soil. If you have sown right here, just like this, this young lady has done, put done. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Don't forget to follow him, please. And here go his bio. Thank you, Latoya, Pastor Latoya, who we will have on next Tuesday. She's going to be a part of Testimony of Tuesday. Please don't. Uh, Y'all better not miss this one either. This one coming up right here, Pastor Latoya Benson. Okay. Y'all keep slipping. Y'all keep slipping. Y'all better be a part of this virtual world. But not only that, stay connected. Y'all, This one right here, the link is in the bio for Pastor J. Y'all get connected and stay connected because we all need each other. Ugh, we definitely need each other. And it was love, good teaching. I love it too. I love it too. To God be the glory. We'll do, we'll do. Thank you so much. And here go his Instagram. Here go his Instagram. Thank you, Toya. Thank you, baby girl. His IG. To God be the glory. Before I um get off the broadcast, I always ask my guests, my special yeah. guests. Mm -hmm to um pray but before i ask you to pray i'm going to extend invitation to discipleship yeah because yeah. it, it I, I would not end this broadcast without sending an invitation um if there may be one i know some of us is already saved some of us all already follow pastor jay but if there is one who might not know jesus in the free pardon of his sin all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that god has truly raised his son from the dead and you shall be saved and if that's you just repeat after me i confess with my mouth i believe in my heart that God has raised his son from the dead. And for that, I am saved. What are you confessing? What are you believing? What are you confessing? St. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Ah! Gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And and if if, if it be thy will, you can put in here, I want to be saved. And I will reach out to you and let you know what, if you're here in the local DC area, metropolitan area, Maryland, DC, Virginia, I will, t I will, I will give you a list of church where you can be comfortable. But I attend the Temple of Praise International Church where we I serve under the leadership of Bishop Glenn A. Staples and Pastor Lamar Staples. 700 Southern Avenue, Southeast, Washington, DC. Or you can join my brother here on this uh, as a special guest, Pastor Jay, at his local assembly church. If y'all can put down there all that information, I am so eternally grateful. Thank you, Deshaun. Thank you, Mr. Deshaun. Here you go. Subscribe to the YouTube channel Nephew. at JDJ International TV. Thank you, sir. Nephew. Thank you, man. I'm telling you, y'all want to follow this brother. But I am so grateful. And I, I'm, I'm eternally, I'm honored. I'm honored. And Pastor Jay, you've given us so much. And I pray now, even a short prayer, that everything, man of God, that you poured out, yeah. spirit of the living God, I thank you. And we give you praise, glory, and honor, oh God, for everything that you've given unto him, oh God. Yeah. God, even in the delay, ah, yeah. God, we realize delay is not the denial, oh God. And God, we thank you, Jesus, that you kept your loving arms around him, ah, even the more, oh Father God, that he was able ah, to get out of his bed of affliction just to tell his story, oh God, to give your name the glory. So God, ah, as we leave this place and never your presence. We give Thank you praise. You. We give you glory. 
We give you honor, oh God. God, gird them up like never before. Ebandi Yosha. Right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone that's working behind the scenes as his staff, oh God. Ah. God, we realize that many are called, but only a few are chosen. God, we thank you for the call and the chosen. We ask all these blessings in your son Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. Pastor Jay, I'm still going to allow you to pray us out, sir. Have your way. Let the Holy Ghost use you however you see fit. Viewers, once again, I'm eternally grateful. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you for click tagging and sharing. Um, and don't forget to come back next Tuesday, same time, 730. We do apologize because we was having some technical difficulties, but God still showed up and show out. We serve a mighty big God in charge. <laughs> he's large and he's in charge. He's large over our life and he's in charge over our life. I'm eternally grateful. Pastor Jay, please close this out, sir. Merciful, merciful, wise God, we thank you for this opportunity, this occasion, God, to share um, <clears throat> your experience that you allow us to endure I'm uh, amongst the people. Father, we thank you, God, for um the word that you have prepared for them, God, just out the straight off the hip. Father, I thank you, God, that this word be nourishing for their body, God, for their mind, body, and soul. Father, I pray, Lord, that the confection out of my heart and out of my mouth, God, that literally would cause them to go back to the altar and say, what must yeah. I do to be saved? Father, I pray right there tonight, God, and leave it even as they rest tonight. Father, I pray that no robbers break in and no fires break out. I pray tonight, God, that you heal them, God, wherever they need to be healed, God. I pray tonight that you mend broken hearts back together. I pray yeah. tonight Bandio. that you reconstruct minds tonight, God. I pray yeah, Bandio, tonight she can see that you bring families back together, God. I pray yeah. tonight, God, that you allow people to understand that to embrace the delay is basically being planted on fertile ground. Father, thank I you, thank you, God, for the people that's getting ready to take off. I pray right now, God, that you literally orchestrated uh, approval in the takeoff. I pray right now for the people that's in their waiting season, God. I pray right now that you are north both elevations, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight, God, that you have your way, God. I pray tonight that drug dealers will put down their guns and pick up a Bible. I pray right now that, that drug users, God, will put down the dope, God, yes. and will literally fall down on their face, God, and she will immediately make them whole tonight, Father. I Thank pray you, tonight. God, that you restore the home, the homes back to the homeless, God. Glory, I God. Glory. That you will not only shelter them, God, with houses, but you will shelter their minds, God, that they would not lead to their own understanding. And Father, I thank you, God. I thank you. I give you glory tonight because yes, this Father. is the day that you have made, and we will and shall be glad in it, God. Now, Father. Now I'm father, now I'm father, and heal the sick, raise the dead, God. Do what you're called to do. Make the dumb talk, God, in the lame walk, God, in the name Thank of you, Jesus, Jesus, God. But most of all, God, we just want to tell you we love you. We tell you when we appreciate you. We magnify your name. We give you all the glory and the honor. Father, we would, would not go to sleep without telling you to search us, God, if you find anything that yeah, shouldn't yeah. be, God. We tell thought in the forgiveness seat and never revise to trouble us again, God. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for making us uh, making Thank us whole again. God, purse us with his and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray right Jesus. now that when they wake up tomorrow, you will give them new mercy. You, When they wake up tomorrow, that you will give them unexpected miracles and signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. Now let this prayer to the yeah. ears of heaven and never return to us void. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus' amen. name, amen, amen. amen. Pastor amen. Jay, sir, thank you so very much. I, I love you. you with I love you with the God of love, sir. I promise you, I do. I love you, sir. Appreciate thank you. you so much, viewers. Once again, I, we won't. I, I won't be long. We're gonna. We're gonna tarry along. Um, to God be the glory. Don't forget next Tuesday. At 7.30, we have our very own Pastor Latoy, Latoya Benson. Y'all better tune in. 7.30, Pastor Latoya Benson. On this page, Testimonial Tuesdays page, not my regular profile, this one, the ministry page. 
From now on, Testimonial Tuesdays will be held here. Amen, amen. And don't forget to um, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well, Testimonial Tuesdays with the Minister Michelle Woodard. To God be the glory. I love you all with agape love. Pastor J Johnson, if you don't mind holding right here as we end the broadcast, don't click out for me yet, sir. I love you all with agape love and I see you next Tuesday. To God be the glory. Mwah. God bless you.